my favorite part about a five axis machine. Recently, we were contacted by a good friend of ours, Josh Quintero from Total Industries out in California. He just purchased a DVF 8000T exactly like the one we have on our floor. But he does have one problem. He's already got a very hot job for that machine. So while his machine's getting delivered and set up, we're gonna help him out by creating the process, programming, fixturing, and proving out the first part. So check out how we're gonna hold this part. So notice that we've got a massive dovetail on the bottom of this, and the part is just hanging out here in the space. We did that for a couple of reasons. Number one is clearance issue. Now I wanted to take this stock and seat it all the way down in the vise, but my problem was the table is so large and the spindle has to come down so far that the spindle was actually gonna hit the top of the table because our part actually goes all the way down to right above where the vise is. So it takes up this entire bit of stock. Now that really only leaves us a couple options there and that's either to use really long tools or we get our vise assembly up off the table or we just raise the material up itself, which is what I did. And the second reason is because only holding a small amount on the bottom is allowing us to reach 95% of this part. So we're gonna be able to finish nearly the entire part and then come back and only leave two tabs that we can break this part off with and just clean up the back side. And that's gonna be great because there's gonna be a lot of excess stock here that we don't have to worry about machining away. And if it wasn't for this feature, the part could come flying out of the vise, which is gonna be a bad day for everybody. This tool is sounding great now, but if you watched our previous video, you'll know that it didn't start out that way. This just ain't working. I tried to use a bigger tool, which led to a whole world of problems, but through a little trial and error, we got to a much more stable process, but that doesn't mean we're in the clear just yet because there's a lot of material coming off of this part. And later on in this video, we're gonna be doing some full slotting with this tool. So make sure you stick around because I really don't know how that's gonna go. Normally you'll hear me say to always do all the roughing passes before any finishing takes place. But this is one of those rare cases that you can't do that because if you look at these two legs that stick off the bottom here, if we come in and rough that pocket out in between that, then they're not gonna have any support. They're just gonna be hanging out in base. And we know that if we go and try to finish that floor, try to drill that hole, it's just gonna flex, bend, chatter. It's gonna do all kinds of things that we don't want. So we're actually gonna leave all of that solid, come in and do all of the finishing on the outside profile. Then we'll come back and rough that pocket and take care of the inside walls. Now at this point, everything is finished except for this inside wall. 
We left all of that solid just for rigidity purposes. Now we're gonna come in and slot this out, bring in our finishing tool, and we can actually finish this whole wall all the way down to this center groove. Then we're gonna call our roughing tool back up and make a slot right in the center. Now that's gonna leave only these two tabs holding the part. Then we'll come in with our last operation and take that thickness of these two tabs down to 50 thousandths. Now at that point, that's all that's gonna hold this part. And all we have to do is reach in and snap it right off. All right, now op one is complete. And here is my favorite part about a five axis machine. It's that wiggle wobble. I don't care if you've seen it a thousand times, it never gets old. I love tabbing parts just to see this. But the biggest kicker to this is we got a huge amount of material that we don't have to rough on the second side, saving a ton of time. But that's not really what's important here. The important part is getting to see this thing move back and forth. So what we're gonna do now is just snap this right off, build a fixture for our second op, and get this part complete. So stay tuned, we'll show you how we're gonna do that. Might have made my tabs just a little bit too thick. Well, if you take a look at this part, we do have some vertical walls on the side, so we could technically hold this straight in our vise for op two, if this was the only part we were making. But we actually gotta make a lot of these parts, so I don't wanna have to indicate every single one every time I change the part out. So that's why I decided to make a simple fixture. This is just a rectangle with some threaded holes in it because these 5 8 holes are perfect for these Mighty Bot extensions. Not only will they hold the part securely, they'll also locate it very well. And I know eight is probably overkill for this, but we got eight holes, so why not use them? And not only that, if we find that these don't locate it good enough, we could actually take two of these out and replace them with locator pins. But now all we have to do is slide this straight on, get our Allen wrench, tighten these up, and it should be good to go.
So now our quadrant dead end shoe clamp is complete and it is perfect. At least until we send it over to quality, then I'm sure shop cop Travis will have something to say about it, as he usually does. Every time I see Travis, it's like, hey bud, this thing's out of spec or it's not intolerant or what other made up terminology they like to say. Well, anyway, as you can see, our Op2 cycle time was only like 10 minutes or something. It was really quick because we used the tabbing method. We didn't have to rough out all of this excess material. Now that's gonna increase tool life as well as reduce cycle time. And now that we've got the process proven, we can go ahead and send the programs and all of the tooling over to Josh at Total Industries so he can run it on his DVF-8000T. If you wanna see more on this part, I'm gonna be uploading this to my profile on cncexpert.com. While you're there, you can get certified on CAD, CAM, and CNC, and check out the global gallery where you can see parts like this from all over the world. It's a platform for machinists by machinists, so make sure that you go and check it out. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments what you think of the tabbing method and if you use it in your shop. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that join button, and we'll see y'all next time. This guy. What's up? I can run my printer from my phone. I don't have to be in front of it. Look at this part we're making. So today we're gonna to be going and running on our DVF 5000. I can't wait to run this part because it's gonna be so cool. <laughs>